We're back to the Neil Haley show. And you know what? It's great to, uh, you know, the almost the end of the year, I've been doing uh, radio, television, podcasting for over 13 years. December 6th was my uh, anniversary. So I'm excited to welcome somebody that, you know what? He has a million downloads a year of his podcast. And a lot of people just can't even get close to that. And he's a really cool guy, Gabe Howard, Inside Mental Health. Gabe, thanks for stopping by, man. And, uh, you know, you're also the author of Mental Health is a A-hole, as uh, I will not put that on my show, but, you know, it's a journey, right? You're thinking of, of coming up with this podcast and doing this and where you've grown to and where, you, where you're going, right? Yeah. So the, the, I, I, I hate correcting hosts on the show, so don't throw anything at my head, but it's mental illness is an a-hole and uh, inside mental health. So you, you got the inside mental health absolutely on the nose. And then yeah, mental illness is an a-hole, you know, mental health doesn't have to be an a-hole, right? Many of us have good mental health. We're, yeah. we're super lucky in that way. I don't know where I got that. That was a Freudian slip because <laughs> everyone in this world is suffering through something right now. And it's gotten to the level that, uh, I don't know, tell us how this kind of started for you in your career. And we'll go from there to like the podcast, the book, everything in your brand. So there's, thank you. Thank you so much for this opportunity. The first thing I want to say is you're absolutely right. People hear that everybody's going through something and they think not everybody is crazy. Not everybody is nuts. Not every, I'm fine. I'm fine. But everybody has mental health. And most people have good mental health most of the time, but just like most people have good physical health most of the time, you can still get a cold, you can still have a runny nose, you can still get in an accident. Grief is obviously a, a, a big thing when it comes to mental health. There's just, there's just all kinds of things that can happen to everyone. And I, I do mean everyone, right? There's, there's not many absolutes in the world, but everyone can have a bad mental health moment. As I alluded to, grief is the really big one that makes people start thinking, okay, maybe this guy's onto something. Because if you tell me that after someone you love dies, you have the same mental faculty and stability as when they were just fine and in your life, that's, that's, that's a hard sell for anybody to, and they're like, you're right, you're right. After I lose somebody I love, I do not expect to be at 100%. And what started it for me is when I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. So I have the serious and persistent mental illness. I'm, I'm right on the mental illness side, which of course is why the book is mental illness is an a-hole uh, because it is, it's, it's being diagnosed is horrible. Uh, living with mental illness is horrible. The way society views me, treats me is horrible. The resources I had available to help me all horrible. So I was 26 years old back in 2003. I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder and uh, and a lot of bad stuff happened to me before, during, and after. And now I just talk about it. <laughs> Man, and so that you have plenty of time on your hands. So how do you deal with bipolar disorder and having a business, a job? Kind of explain that to me, you know? Yeah, so the first things first, it, it, it's... It's always difficult to answer these questions because uh, you get like two minutes to try to sum up 20 years right. worth of uh, coping skills, experience, therapy visits, and of course the big one, mistakes, right? There's so many things that I just completely screwed up and thought, huh, I don't want to do that again because it hurt my mom or it hurt my friend or it hurt my wife or it, it hurt me. So what can I do different next time this symptom comes on or this feeling comes on, or I'm in this same situation and, and having a, a long time to learn all those things is super important, but therapy is super important to me again, to process those things. Cause I can't think of everything. I, I just know that something went wrong like that. That is the, that is the landing point for Gabe Howard. That was bad. I'm looking backwards at what I did last week. And I think, huh? Wow. Wow. I, I, here's an example. I got so angry that I told my mom, I hated her in the moment. It sounded good. Like I was winning the argument. You put some distance there. The, the, the symptoms relax. I, I'm no longer manic. I'm not experiencing those racing thoughts, that grandiosity. I'm just right in the center. I'm normal. I'm, I'm, and I'm like, dude, you're the guy that said you hated your mom. And uh, how do you get past that? Like how, how do you, I, 
I want to say like, I'm a good son. Yeah. Yeah. But like anybody would say, you know, good sons, they don't have to tell people they're good sons. People just know that they are. Mm -hmm. So now I've got to make amends for all of that. I've got to fix all that. But more importantly, I got to make sure I'm never in that situation again. Medication is also extraordinarily helpful. You know, the downside of bipolar disorder is there's, there's, you know, it's bipolar. It's right in the names. There's the extreme highs, you know, what I refer to as godlike mania. It's where you think you're invincible to the extreme lows, suicidal depression, where you think you're worthless. And if you were dead, nobody would care. Uh, and then everything in between. So the medication takes those two extremes and, and pushes them together into a much more manageable range. It's not to say that you never slip outside those guardrails, but you, you slip outside those guardrails less frequently and you have more notice that you're getting to that point. And, and, and you can institute some of those coping mechanisms and, and, and things that really keep you safe. It's not a perfect system. I'm certainly not symptom free, but that really, really helps to answer the second question as to the business, right? It's day by day, right? I got to do something. I, I got to, I got to eat <laughs> and I, I like to eat, man. I'm uh, food is, I love, I love, I love food, Neil food is, I love, I love food. So it's, it's, it, it can be a struggle and it can be awesome. And isn't that just, doesn't that just describe so do you do entrepreneurship or you work a job? What do you do? Is this just your business? Yeah, this is my business. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm an author, speaker, podcaster. Uh, this, this is my job. I was really fortunate when I was first diagnosed. I had, you know, the, the nine to five, uh, I worked in it. I worked in, in computers and networking. I, I transitioned into public relations and fundraising where I worked a job while I was doing that. I did a lot of public speaking and, you know, obviously if you're in public relations, you're addressing the public a lot. Yeah. And uh, eventually people are like, wow, you're really good at this. And uh, you, you should, you should do it more. Uh, and you should talk about your experience. You're right. And you should talk about your experience. You're really open with this kind of thing. Right. Uh, so I started volunteering, telling my story. Uh, so, and, and it grew from there. I, I would love to tell you, Neil, that this was like, like I wrote a business plan. I did a SWOT analysis. I hired a whole bunch of MBAs. I'm a super awesome business. No, no, I fell backwards. Well, I like think the challenge of, of bipolar disorder is the ups and downs of entrepreneurship, business owners, again, defining entrepreneurship, if you're doing something different than everybody else and you're getting seed money and all that. So we're business owners, both of us to, to deal with some days are such tremendous highs. And some days are such tremendous lows and to already be dealing what you're dealing with and being self-employed with your business, man, that's going to be tough because you're going to have tremendous highs and tremendous lows. And you don't really want to deal with that to keep yourself at an even pace. And that's why lots of people cannot be business owners. They cannot rely on their paycheck to be putting out whatever they do every day, right? I, Hustling, doing this. Yeah. It's it, it's fascinating that you bring that up because my, my mother way, way back when this was, was this was 15 years ago, I got like my first paid gig uh, speak speaking engagement and it paid twenty five hundred dollars. Right. And and I told my mom, I'm like, mom, mom, somebody's paying me twenty five hundred dollars for a speech. And she's like, how long is the speech? And I was like, it's like an hour. She goes, wow, my son makes twenty five hundred dollars an hour. And uh, I was like, no, no, mom, I've, I've been, I've been volunteering, working for free, working for negative money for two years. I, I had to write the speech. I have to get on a plane and try, like, I don't just pop up on the podium, give a speech. And then, you know, I'm, I'm back in my living no. room. Right. But she can't get it all these years later. She doesn't understand that some of the work I do, I get paid for. And some of the work I do, I don't get paid for. And when you average that out, that's how much, that's your salary for your quote unquote job, because that's all done for her, right? She just, she just goes to work. Now her, her workplace knows that some of the work they have her do, they lose money on some of the work they have her do. They make money on, they average that all out, take a little off the top for them and then give her a salary. But as far as my mom con is concerned, every other Friday, she gets the same amount. So every hour is worth exactly the same amount of money to her. That is not the case when you own your own business. And the, the highs are really great, right? Signing that contract to get that speech, signing that contract with that advertiser for your podcast. Get, those get a, are get a big, big, big moments. Get a big payday from a client, you know, yeah. or just those, those days where you're, you're told you're the greatest and then things are money is coming. And then, then there's the days where, oh man. 
I wish I could just have, be mindless. So yeah. but what you're dealing with, the challenge you're dealing with, Gabe, is the fact that and don't it's you're fragile in a way you know even though you're on the medication all that stuff that a certain low could put you back down we look at the people that are the great uh comedians that end up committing suicide you know and all these different things so mental health is something people are just not discussing uh there was a article out i think about how many people are dissatisfied with their jobs and how many people are depressed right now that are working they have a job that's yeah. why everyone wants, wants to be doing what you and i do but the problem is they're not willing to take working for free. They're not gonna. They're not gonna take late nights and and uh, weird hours and different things like that. How do you deal with it, man? Because that's not a really great recommendation for somebody with bipolar disorder to be a business owner. Yeah. There. So the first thing is is. People with bipolar disorder own businesses all the time. You just got to make sure that you start them when you're stable. I, I think everybody has the, the and this is 100% true, right? Bipolar disorder has this grandiosity and this, this manic sort of notion to it. Well, not notion, it's it, symptom. Symptom is the word I'm looking for, right? Where you think that you are the greatest of all time. And in that time, you invent Amazon. You invent Walmart, you invent Yelp. All of these things already exist, right? And they were they were they were started years ago with hundreds yeah. of millions of dollars. They're billion dollar companies, but no, you are gonna take on Amazon. So and that, you so you'll be able it. to do that if you have bi bipolar disorder, meaning if you were if you were not getting it treated, that's the type of manic highs you could try to do. Yeah, you start a thousand businesses. And as you pointed out, let's go back to something you said. You said they can't take working for free, the late nights and the uncertainty, right? So that's the problem. So so there, there's there's several stages of- I don't think anybody can as a business owner if you interviewed them till they, yeah. <laughs> till they got their first big deal, meaning like became a millionaire or a billionaire, then they could probably say, okay, uh, I'm a little bit more confident in what I'm doing. But at those other stages, you probably interviewed them. No, they it's, all had that. The problem with bipolar disorder, uh, untreated or unmanaged, right, is uh, the 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 ups and downs. Like like let's here, let me put it together like this. Okay, so if you are unmanaged, untreated, you're not stable with bipolar disorder. Your emotions are all over the place. Okay, so keep that in your right. right? One one minute you're you're you know you you are the greatest business person to ever live. The next minute you're garbage, and your mom wouldn't care if you were dead. Now oh. let's put that aside for a moment and talk about the emotions that go along with entrepreneurship. One minute you are the greatest business person to ever live, and the next minute your mom is like, "Get a real job. You're embarrassing the family." Yes, right? I, I I'd like to believe that most people with 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 uh, entrepreneurial I ideas are are not suicidal, and I and they I'm have to surround themselves up. with the right people, man. The, they uh, have to, you know. And you're talking mental health. You have to. You have to be with people who are like minded. If you're a business owner, you know. So the reason I'm learning this is my mentor taught me this about entrepreneurship is to, having a specific idea. That if you would Google it right now, but everyone calls themselves an entrepreneur. Really, we're business owners, and that's okay. Right. We're, we're, we are, we are, we're, we're not working for the man, right? We get the <laughs> opportunity to do it what the hell we want to do when we want to do it. That's probably the best definition of a business owner. We get to do what the hell we want to do when we want to do it. But ultimately, if we want to have more money, we got to do it more. And ultimately, right. we, we have to hire more people if we want to expand. And if we want to expand even more, we have to hire more people and more stress and more different things. But it's much better for in our mindset than somebody else outside and say, yeah, pay me a salary. I'll get home and I'll go back to the normal days. And that's it. So there, back, there's a certain imagine. routine that comes with working for someone, but it's not as exciting. It's not as fun. And it's not, um, it's it's awesome. fun. I, you know, you know, I had Sean Cannon on my show yesterday. I got to talk to somebody that worked with Prince and all these major people. I talk to people all the time and that's one of my businesses, but meaning then I get to go in calls and talk about some venture capitalist I was on a phone call this morning already with. These are the things that not the average normal everyday person is. Or I was talking to an Academy Award director yesterday that wants to maybe do a project with me. Okay, there you go. I mean- As soon as- uh, it no, I know exactly no. what you mean because it, it's the same thing. The people that I got to interview, the people that I get to talk to, I, I, Alanis Morissette would have never walked into a room with me if I was not, if I was this, if I was working a nine to five job, it, it wouldn't have happened. And, and it, it's amazing, right? And, and that's the non-money that people have to look at, but it comes after 
two, no, but three, then four, five years then of connecting sleepless it nights. To make money. That's the thing I do and teach people to do is that you have an idea, you have a dream, you have a specific thing, you can make money doing it. You just don't want to start everything before you go to the first steps. You got to grind. You can't just become a star. It's not the way things work, but that's where, you know, we come in. But I mean, I, I, I commend you, man. Because I can tell you, I, I deal with the ups and downs and I'm able to deal with it really well. I, I don't lose sleep when I know there's a client upset with me or somebody or I'm dealing with some sort of thing and I need to have money in a specific time or a certain place. I just go bed, hit the pillow, go back and I'm back rolling again. If you watch the movie and this is a really good, I can't, you, you like me in podcast, right? It's like, it's the conversation and I'm sure that's where your success is. I'm able to go ahead and, you know, uh, I like Ray Kroc. If you watched again, the founder, he kept getting hit. He kept getting knocked down, but he kept getting back up. That's me. You, as a former professional wrestler, you know, taking the pin one night, next night, I'm back out for trying to win the championship again. I could get Nick knocked down, but the problem sometimes is the all time lows that bipolar lead to yeah. lead to did who has bipolar disorder that end up passing away for suicide and stuff? Do you have a list of the certain celebrities? Kurt, Kurt Cobain is the big one, the the lead singer of Nirvana. I, here's a guy who is literally the front man for what is still the the biggest musical movement of my generation. I the, the man practically invented alternative music and launched the genre. He just smells like Teen Spirit is still a hit thirty years later, and. Uh, Kurt Cobain, once in a lifetime musical talent, world famous. I and and he's gone. He's just gone. He could all of those millions, all of that fame, all of that talent, and all of those people couldn't save him from bipolar disorder. Mm. And that's a that's a that's a big thing that people like me think about a lot because if he can't do it, how, how can I do it? I don't I don't have any of those things. I'm not world famous. I'm not a billionaire. I'm not a once in a See, lifetime. But you talent. shouldn't say I'm not because someday you may. So someday. Remember. But currently, Remember. and especially when I was diagnosed, when I was sitting in that psychiatric hospital, I was absolutely not, not Kurt oh, Cobain. So that, so, right, exactly. And your your genius comes out at different times. So people can subscribe to the, so basically your book and your podcast is why you're on the show. I just yeah. have a conversation because I think an entrepreneurial slash business owner discussion is interesting because people that will listen to both of us they, before they go in, say you know what i'm ready to retire and to have and to have fun well the fun is fun you just gotta put the the work in as gary v would say and i would not say the rest of it is basically you got to put the work in because guess what if you don't put the work in it's not going to happen right or wrong Gabe. you don't put it's the work never going to happen and listen, I, I I love the comparison to being a business owner and, and and being an entrepreneur and managing bipolar, right? There because there there's so many similarities. Managing bipolar disorder takes a lot of effort that pays off later. Being an, a successful entrepreneur uh, entrepreneur takes a lot of effort that pays off later. I would love to tell you with bipolar disorder that you're like, hey, I want to reach recovery, and then two weeks later you've reached recovery. It doesn't happen. It's a long process. I would love to tell you that you start a business and over. Overnight, you're a success. You're Look, not. How many? How many? How many businesses are successful and profit, bro? Ten percent. Ten percent. And then the other ones you see, they think have money because they've seen money. Doesn't mean they profited. What's right? fascinating I mean, to me. In your back, yeah. Neil, I, I'm sure you've heard this quote. I'm sure your listeners have heard this quote, but the 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 greatest quote that I ever heard, I think it's one of my personal favorites, is I had to work 10 years to become an overnight success. So many people focus on the, oh, they became an overnight success. I You talked about my million podcast uh, downloads. That's great. I'm super proud of it. I work really, really hard. I'm so proud, right? I'm not trying to, to, to I'm, I'm not crapping on my success, but I'm on year seven. Let's go back to year one. There wasn't a million podcast downloads about a mental health podcast seven years ago. Th there was nothing. I, I have some of the emails of people telling me I suck. Uh, and, and for what it's worth, they, they were right. The advice was good. I needed to improve a lot. I was inexperienced. There was no podcast conferences or class. I mean, there were. I just wasn't it's aware. Crazy of them. crazy now. It's not they have. But I think, again, that the people who are podcasters, 
because I was on club. Uh, I was in Clubhouse uh, as one of the top podcast people that was talking about podcasts, and all these people were just told you're going to make millions in a podcaster. You better just go on YouTube, right? You better go on TikTok. But it still, it doesn't guarantee anything. And if you're not interesting, who gives? A sh- they're not going to care, right? right. And, and if, if you're, you're lucky also, enough you're to not have people hustle, tune in, you're not you going to hold them. You're not going to build followers. You're not going to gain a, a community, build a community like you have. And, you know, right place, right time, hustle, 3 a.m., hustle then. And that's not good for, you know, a, a business owner's health or someone with bipolar disorder. So there, there you go. So where can people tune in? Where's the best play? The the uh, inside the inside mental health podcast of course is available on every single podcast player known to man. Our website is psychcentral.com slash show. You can check it out there. And then of course the book is available on or you know mental illness is an a hole. You you got to spell it out. You got to use the s's. But mental illness is an a hole is available of course on Amazon. But if you want a signed copy with free show swag, head over to gabehoward.com and I'll sign it for you. You can even tell me how to sign it. Make up funny names. People do all the time. It's hilarious. All right, you're listening and watching the Neil Haley show. We'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> 